While watching YouTube, I found this video of a guy playing Cop Cuphead with his girlfriend. So, I decided to do the same. Allow me to introduce you to... Well, Cuphead and his pal mug man, they like to roll the dice. And so, I will be doing Cop Cuphead by myself, controlling one cup with each hand. The goal of the run is simple to beat every stage in the game, including the DLC. In co-op mode, the boss's HP doubles and if one of the players dies, then his remaining HP cuts by half. So to avoid cheesing bosses, I will count on a temp of success only when either both of the cups remain alive or when the ghost of the dead cup is still on the screen. To start, I fixed players 1 controls to be all for the left hand and for the second player I used the controller. At first I needed some coins to get the very needed power ups for later. I got 3 coins for mech and tried the first run and gun for 5 more coins. And boy was that a mistake. I thought it wouldn't be much different than playing fireball and water goal but there was a slight difference. Cuphead has moving, jumping, shooting and dashing. And since I played two players, I had to do each of those twice, which, eh, well, I'm too dumb to do. So, to make life easier to me, I gave up on dashing unless it was absolutely necessary. Later on, I found out that the run and gun levels are probably the worst for this kind of run, since I had to focus on so many different things happening on the screen at once and react with each hand separately. And Worst of all, since it was just the first level, I didn't have any power-ups or weapons to use to make the level easier. But after getting used to it a bit and practicing a lot, and with a lot of patience, the first run and gun was done. On a normal run, I would always get spread bullets for the damage potential. But on this run I played it safe and got roundabout to be able to not worry too much about aiming and smoke bomb just in case I would be using dashes later on. And my strategy paid off on the very next level. Gupel Le Grande first two faces are whatever and they are pretty easy to dodge without jumping or dashing. And for the last phase I used the roundabout shooting up so that way most of the bullets hit the grave when he passed by without me wasting a lot of them. Then when he prepared the smash I could just walk away from it even if barely. The root pack are a joke as always, but surprisingly, the one who put up the most challenge was Sal. It was extremely hard to dodge his dirt balls and I almost died there. But after that, all his tears were simple and Sean C was cheesed by filling the entire screen with roundabouts. Now, I consider Ribby and Crocs to be one of the hardest bosses in the entire game and they always caused me trouble when I did an S rank run. For some reason, I just can't get good at their third phase. Their first two phases are fair enough, but no matter how hard I tried, all the three variants of the obstacles in the third phase are horrible. So after some tries, I quit this boss and went to train on the overbuses. I don't think that the mausoleums change in co-op mode in any kind of way, so it wasn't a problem at all to get my first and main superpower. The plain levels aren't that hard in this run since I anyway don't have dash here and I have a lot of time to parry a ghost back to life. The only difficulty with Hilda really is how long her fight keeps on going and going forever. I don't know if it's just me, but why is her final phase transfer take so so long? A little tip for the final phase. It took me so long to figure it out, but when a red UFO comes, it will fire its beam when you go near it, and the brown UFO will fire at a fixed place. Back to Ribby and Croaks, now with the super burst. I kept both of them from the final phase and used it as soon as it started. I'm the worst at the, the tiger orange jumps and luckily for me those didn't come. Two waves of the fogged green platforms gave me just enough time to finish them and it was time for the final guy of the aisle. 
The hardest part for me in Kearney's fight is his little annoying orange flying uh, thingy. But an easy way to deal with him is to parry the pink seed before it touches the ground and then he won't spawn at all. The rest of the little mobs are cleared with the roundabout and after a long practice with the toads, the second Kearney phase wasn't an issue at all. I will return much, much later to the first aisle to do the second run and gun, but for now it was time for aisle 2. First on the list was Baroness 1 Bonbon. Bon. There are plenty of options for the three phases before her, so I needed to get lucky to have the best chance to beat her. The best option for me were Lord Packer and the Sergeant Gumball, while the worst was Mafsim Chirknop. I don't know why, but his little splashes after he lands always caused a massive pain in the ass for me. In the end, I got a mid but not too bad roll on her minions, and Bonbon bon herself wasn't much of a challenge. Beppy was next, and oh man, maybe he is a clown, but I was the joke. I used the smoke bomb to cheese his first phase, and after that the balloon dogs were held. It was hard enough to follow so many dogs at once and keep dodging two cups from them, but the train made it barely possible. The donkey phase felt just like a simplified version of the dog's phase, when most of the time I could hit both the cups directly under the donkey. And the last phase was a second hell. It wasn't that hard to jump across the platforms while the train was riding. But dodging from f 4 penguins that shoot baseballs at you was pain. So to counter that, I stored my super attacks for the last phase, and as soon as they started rolling out, I used it, cleaning the screen of penguins. And that way I managed to get baby. Jimmy wasn't all that bad. His first phase was simple as long as it wasn't the chest option, and the second phase went pretty smooth as well. On the third phase, I used my favorite tactic of staying in the one exact spot where most of his stuff couldn't hit me and fly back a little bit when he sent the two planets near me, and just keep dropping bombs on him. The puppet cap phase wasn't all that great, but I did manage to get a couple parries out of it. And then I tried to finish the last phase as quickly as possible because I genuinely have no idea how to effectively dodge the pyramid, but two super bombs later, Jimmy was done. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the plane levels on my normal runs, as in contrast to the normal stages, I couldn't cheat in them using Mrs. Chalice or the smoke grenade. But surprisingly, on this run, the plane levels generally went extremely smooth. On his favor attack, Wally resembles the crazy doctor's last phase, so I was extremely used to that by now. And on his last phase, the bombs just make it pretty easy to win, so the only issue I had was his son in his first phase. The egg attack always felt uncomfortable for me to dodge, and I never really got confident at it. Meanwhile, his sun move pattern is just so weird that I don't really understand it well enough to counter it properly. But after just a handful of tries, Wally was down and it was time to finish after. Grim is a huge problem for most players, but in this run, yeah, he also was bloody annoying. It's bad enough to keep track of his attacks, but the moving platforms is a whole new level of something by playing two cups. His first phase, however, is not that bad, since he only has about two attacks. His second phase is a problem largely to him being very low, making most weapons miss him. I could use the bouncing weapon, but I didn't really have any money for it, so roundabout just kinda did the work instead. The last phase is a mess both thanks to the flame and thrower and the spitting of fire ropes. I'm not sure how, but probably just thanks to a lot of luck I managed to survive it long enough to see the next aisle. Number 3 
But before that, I made a quick stop to do one of the run and guns on IL-2 just to get some coins for new weapons. Most of it wasn't very memorable, except for the cannon part with the dropping platforms, but after Grim it wasn't much of an issue. Then I took out shooting range with the previously never used chaser. After that I took a very slow and careful approach, deleting every single pretzel before moving on to the hot dog and finishing it. Then on my way to the fourth aisle I stopped by in the DLC to get my free 5 coins from there. With the newly acquired 10 coins I went to the merchant and bought Crackshot and Heartring. The first boss I faced on aisle 3 was Captain Brinybeard, probably one of the easiest bosses in the entire game, at least for me. And to top that with the new crack shot I just got, I only died once to him and moved on. The main strategy I took for him was sticking to the ship's face at every single moment possible except when it fires the fire orbs. From here on, I mostly used Crackshot when it was hard to aim at the enemies and roundabout when I wanted to fill the screen with as many projectiles as possible. In addition to that, while I was fighting Grumo Honey Buttons, I switched the smoke grenade for the heart ring. This meant that now instead of relying solely on the free HP I had at the start, I could add up to 3 more HPs with a couple parries. And seeing that one of the cups often died, reviving also counted as parry, so reviving now also held the other cup. The first two phases were pretty easy, and thanks to Crackshot I didn't have to worry about aiming at Rumor in her plain phase. The heart ring kept carrying me with Dr. Cow. Thanks to his chest pounding parry items, I could get a bit extra health on the first phase while focusing on all the parts equally. Then, once his head got detached, I quickly followed up with two super bombs to skip the second phase at all. Now, the first phase wasn't all that bad, but not being able to turn smaller and get that extra little build of speed made it just a bit worse. And, as usual, the foreground objects were the real pain in the last phase. And I'm not even sure if it was intentional or just a design mistake. Sally might be a great actress, but certainly not that much of a fighter. The only notable part to this fight was her fourth phase when she summons the meteor and then the big wave. Not having enough skill to parry the star one after another just in time to cross over the big wave, I was in a bit of a problem. So I decided to keep my super attacks for that and when a big wave came, I dodged it by using the super attack. After that, the last phase wasn't all that much of a trouble and she was done in a couple seconds. A quick stop in the mausoleum for a pretty bad super skill. Werner had the same problem with his phase 1 jumping platforms, so I just tried my best and made sure that at least one of the cab will dodge it. Then the second phase was just a pure question of getting lucky on the random rotating cups. And the final phase was pretty safe as long as I got rid of the ghost mouse in time before they started shooting out their orbs and messing up the whole screen. The train express wasn't anything special and my build was extremely strong against them. The infinite dropping soap made a great way to farm some more health on the first phase while clearing all the eyes using the roundabout. Then phase 2 and 3 were just a joke as long as you understand the idea of moving the cart using the parry wheels. And finally the train itself wasn't all that bad thanks to the auto aim of crackshot. But there was just one more boss I had to do before facing King Dice. Usually Lady Maria never took me more than a couple tries, but this was a whole over case. 
Almost all of her attacks played against me while I was controlling both cups. The ghost pirates aren't hard to dodge while you in just one player, but with two I was never sure who will they aim at and where should I dodge. And then the puffer fish were pretty hard to dodge even solo, so it was 10 times worse with two cups. But then the real problem showed up. In phase 2, after she turns you into stone, you have a few moments to unfreeze yourself by spawning buttons. But while using each hand for one cup, I couldn't do it fast enough to unfreeze both of them before the eels started firing at me. It took me a while to realize there was just a tiny enough space in, in front of her where I could hide and not get frozen. But then, in the third phrase, there wasn't any place like that in the tiny tunnel, so it was again a pain in the ass. I'm not even sure how I did it, but I did it. After so many tries, and finally the casino was open. So, I went to do the DLC. If you ask me how did I beat Flamstone, to be frank, I have no idea. Looking at the footage now, I see that I sucked at every one of his faces, so I guess that I just brute forced him. Even up until this day, I absolutely have no strategy for his king dice and devil phase, solo or not. As for the other faces, I always did them with Miss Chalice, so again, no idea how did I do it this time. While fighting against Mortimer, I noticed that he's quite a weird boss. He's for sure the easiest one in the DLC, or at least I think so. And a lot of his attacks are reused ones from other bosses. Like his seal smash in the first phase is just a reskin of Goopy Storm Smash. Or his phase 3 buckets are just slower version of the exploding egg in the first phase of Wallace fight. But he is one of the hardest bosses to S rank, since he barely gives a chance to get free parries from him. And if you try to slow down at any point, wait for his parable attack, you'll run out of time to get the S rank. Moonshine Mob 1st and 2nd phase are a great showcase of just how OP Crackshot is. With the first phase usually being swarmed by enemies, with Crackshot the entire arena was almost always empty and Charlie wasn't much of a challenge on his own. Then on the second phase again, Crackshot cleans every single mob on the arena so the only thing you had to focus on was dodging the death lasers from the party phone. The only reason why the fight itself isn't a big joke is that on the third phase, the Ant Eater's hitboxes are wrong, you could even say they are buggy. And Crackshot almost always aims only at his tongue which does no damage. So with this one you had to aim yourself at him, but all in all, a really fun fight. A cow goal, cow goal. That's genius, you have actually picked now. Also, I'm not really sure if she's supposed to be the sheriff or the bad guy. After my very painful session with Maria, I was afraid to death from Esther, as she was my first plain fight for a long time. Even thinking about her vacuum attack with the later dropping and exploding safes made me extremely nervous, and her last phase sausage attack made me want to cry. But you know what? I somehow actually got her in less than 10 tries. I have no idea how, but I did it. But man oh man, I never want to do any plain fights ever again. Before fighting the Howling Aces, I made a quick stop at the King of Games castle. To do all of those challenges, I used Miss Chalice as the main parry and Magman was mostly there just to cheer her up. As with the mausoleums, I don't think that the enemies here got any more HP while in co-op, so all of the challenges were pretty easy. 
The knight was just a normal solo fight with Miss Chalice, while Magman stayed behind and watched her. Sometimes switched sides when the knight rushed to the other side. In the bishop fight, again, Magman stayed in the corner while Miss Chalice did all the heavy lifting, sometimes rushing to revive him. You can guess how the rook fight went by now. Magman crouched down most of the fight and very rarely got hit from a low flying spark while Miss Chalice did all the work. The queen was an interesting case. With two players I could easily control all the cannons and the queen really barely had any chance to do anything against me. It took a whole 28 seconds from the start of the battle and until the moment she died, and that was the fastest I ever beaten the queen so far. With the new coins, I bought a bunch of stuff at the shop, only notably the twin heart that I would use later. I can't really say much about the howling aces. It was a decent fight, but nothing in it was crazy good or crazy hard, or even that interesting. But it did provide me with a lot of parry chances, and especially in the second phase, and by the time I got to the final phase, it didn't even matter if I would get hit once or twice. But the gravity flip is kinda cool, I guess. Now, the only bosses that I had left were King Dice, the Devil himself, and Chef Soulbaker, so before fighting any of them, it was finally time to rush all the run and gun levels. The second of the IL-1 run and gun was a total mess for me when I started this run, and I died to it for hours. The main issue were the leaves that were disappearing right after we step on them. It's not much of an issue while soloing, but in co-op it's quite a problem, and then, even if you make it until the end of the level, the final mini boss is a pain in the ass too. But with the new crack shot and super skills, it was all left behind, and I could move to L2 again. I spent a lot of time on the second run and gun, on the second aisle as well. The first half of the level wasn't all that bad, but when the moving platforms with the gravity flip came up, it was a new level of hell for me. After I barely managed to get about 70% of the way, I stand in one place and found the flying periphery just to heal both of the cups. For some reason, that specific part right after the last tuba guy and before the car's mini boss was so hard to master. Probably because at all times I had to constantly keep watch of one of the cups in normal gravity and the other one in a reverse gravity state. Both of the four dials run and guns level were absolute mess, each one for their unique reason. The first one was mostly a mess only and only because of the giant cyclop at the end of the level. Even when I came with a full HP to that stage, I always had an issue that if one of the cups fell down, I had to focus on bringing him back to a platform and synchronizing the cups again. But while I was doing that, the second cup would then fall, and thus the cycle repeated until both died. So my only option was to do the cycle part without a single hit. And after many practices, I managed to do that part. With just one hit that was lucky enough to happen to both cups at once, so they didn't go out of synchronization. As for the second run and gun, it wasn't the octopus. But not the part when I was on his head dodging a bunch of mobs and shooting at icebergs. But the part right before that, with his hands being sinking platforms. As I discovered at the start of the run, you can't parry with both the characters the same item at the exact same time. But then, I couldn't have time between the cups jumping because the hand would already sink. 
So my only option was to start with one cap and just a moment after follow with the next cap, meaning the head to be just desynchronized enough for it to be a huge pain. But after many attempts I did it and it was time to face the final three bosses. King dies is a major problem. Having so many different stages and the final stage being full of parries. To have the best chances with the dice parry, I switched Cuphead for Miss Chalice again. Then I needed to figure out the three battles that I would aim to do on the run to the final stage. So, first off, I suck at the Miss Chimes and Miss Wheezy fights, mainly because of the rotating fire ropes and how long Chim's fight is. Then the Hocus Pocus is not all that bad, but Miss Chalice is just horrible in pairing vertically, so I'll just leave that option out. The second flying mini boss is not all that bad too, but I'd rather just avoid any flights on this fight anyway. So that leaves me with Tipsy Toop and Chips Betigan for the first round, Pip and Dot for the second round, and either 8-ball or Piruleta for the final round before King dies himself. Ideally, they also have the extra hearts on them, so I kept restarting where more than one heart wasn't on one of them. And the final issue was that I had to somehow figure out how to deal with King dies himself and his card attack. In the end, I just got as many hearts as possible and hope that it will somehow work out. Chips wasn't any issue as I just used smoke grenade and Miss Chalice roll to dodge his chips and relied on crack shot to do the damage. With Pip and Dot, I didn't really have a solid strategy, so I just did my best and got good, dodging as much as I could and again relying on crack shot to deal the damage. Piruleta is just a joke when having smoke grenade and Miss Chalice. So I just went right through hell. And then I messed up the dice and got to fight Mango as well. To my luck, like bo, just stay under him and you'll have to step aside once in every 10 minutes. Then with King Dice I remember an all forgotten trick of mine. His hands are just barely short of reaching the edge of the screen so I could hide behind them and dodge all the cards. Granted, I couldn't hurt him from that position, so in a solo run it's a pretty much useless tactic. But on this run, I could hide one of the players and focus only on the second one, while using crack shot to deal damage with him. And that way I managed to finally get King dice and face against the devil himself. Surprisingly, the devil himself went pretty smooth for me. As with the running gun runs, I used the twin heart to get as much starting health as possible. The first phase was a bit challenging, mailing thanks to his rotating blue orbs attack, but he had many over attacks, so I just got lucky and didn't get it on the winning run. And then there's the goat hand slam which required me to jump and dash just at the right moment. But by now, I actually managed to do it consistently without losing any health. Then the second phase was nothing special, with me mainly staying with in one place and pairing the flying bomb from time to time. On the fourth phase I used both the special attacks to clear the screen from the big guys and the little flying guys to make it as easy as possible. And on the last phase I had plenty of health left so I didn't even worry about losing at this point. Overall a great run and I'm extremely happy it's finally over. <sighs> Chef Salt Baker. Now, the first two phases went surprisingly well. After spending house and house to S rank the fight in solo mode, and after all those house playing co op, 
it wasn't all that bad to dodge most of his stuff. The thing that annoyed me the most is probably the limes, since I couldn't double jump over them like I would usually do with Miss Chalice. Then the second phase was easier than usual, since I guess the mob's HP wasn't double in corp, so they were dying faster than they could shoot at anything at me. The little part with the saw in the dancing door is just whatever, but then came the last pain of the run. I had to keep jumping to not fall down, and the platforms were often too far apart so I also had to constantly use the dash. And to top it off, I was so used to the hard version of the fight, so for most of my attempts I had thought that I could have damaged the heart only by using the parry on it. I didn't realize that in normal mode I could just shoot at him like at any normal mob. So after I finally realized that, I barely managed to survive the fight and put the last boss to rest. I'm so glad that it was finally over and if you actually watched up until now, um, uh, yeah, thanks you and uh, stuff, yeah, yeah. It was a really long video to make and to record, but hopefully it was worth it. I'm still not sure when will the next video be or even what will it be about, but make sure to like and subscribe to not miss it. Also, I would love to hear any suggestions you guys have.